I earn about $3,000 per month. I tried living in San Francisco on that budget. I was able to do it, but it was really, really hard. I want to compare what America's brand of capitalism has done to housing versus what Europe and in particular Austria has done to house people. So first up, I came across this CNN business feature on this company called Podshare. Now what they do is rent out bunk beds with no privacy in shared spaces for $1,200 a month. As you're going to see, this is what capitalism has done for Americans. Podshare is affordable shared housing that we build across Los Angeles and here in San Francisco is our first site. The idea is membership-based housing, so if you book a pod, you can stay across the whole network of locations. I was born in the USSR in 1985. My whole concept was like the idea of the government giving you everything in a communist state. What if you could subscribe to a housing membership and have all your needs met? In the fridge, there should just be like cereal, ramen, you know, collegiate foods. And there should be, always be toothpaste and toilet paper and just these basic things that you just need to live. Like they should just be handled for you. And that's kind of the concept of Podshare. You just share pods across a network with people that become your friends. I earn about $3,000 per month. I tried living in San Francisco on that budget. I was able to do it, but it was really, really hard. Podshare model is really for myself, which is solo, single, no children, no pets. You know, like I'm really just building something I want to live in. So the hardest thing about living in a place like this is that you give up your privacy. That's something that you do have to get used to once you start. By the way, come on through. Oh yeah, yeah, go through. Last time. <laughs> Not a problem. I think if prices become more affordable, Podshare will die, and that's okay because I think it's here to solve a problem. And um, if the rents ever became normalized, then, then I don't know if a pot share would be necessary because everyone would just get their own private place. All right. Now, before I go any further, I want to share this tweet from Molly Crabapple where she was commenting on this saying, under socialism, no one will own anything, they said. Under socialism, you'll live in grim, identical barracks, they said. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, this is not socialism. This is capitalism. Now, I have to admit here, the idea of living in a situ in a I guess a, an environment like this is kind of appealing in the sense that if you enjoy living in a dorm, um, then you would enjoy living in something like this. But understand, my criticism here isn't about the the conditions or how these people are living. It's the cost. Twelve hundred dollars a month for a bunk bed. No privacy. I mean, this is insane. And what I find hilarious about this video is how they attach it to, to the USSR and communism. So the CEO there is from the USSR and she was inspired apparently uh, by the living conditions there. But understand, this is capitalism. So as Peter Coffin tweets out, CNN knows exactly what they are doing with this. They know this is a garbage deal, $1,200 for no privacy, and have to be absolutely stoked when the person says they are inspired by the USSR. Make no mistake, this is as capitalist as it gets. And even the CEO says there at the end that this business would not exist if housing was affordable. I mean, this is capitalism. This is 100% capitalism. And if you're afraid of Soviet-style uh, communism, then what does something like this say for capitalism? Where the U.S. has now created this environment where this kind of thing, $1,200 for a bunk bed, is a viable business model. Now, let's go a little bit farther into the details here in terms of the cost of housing over the last 40 years. So the Joint Center for Housing Studies at Harvard um, put out this data. So I'm going to show you this map while I read over their um, a piece of their report. The map, which allows users to visualize price to income ratios from 1980 to 2017 for 382 metropolitan areas, also shows that in 1988, home prices were five times greater than incomes in only seven markets, and the highest price to income ratio in the country was 6.7 in the Naples, Florida metro area. Moreover, three quarters of metro areas had price to income ratios below 3.0 including several areas where home prices now greatly exceed average incomes. Illustratively, between 1988 and 2017, price-to-income ratios more than doubled in Miami, from 2.9 to 6.3, Denver, 2.7 to 5.5, and Seattle, 2.5 to 5.7. 
So basically what this data shows is that the cost of housing continues to grow while wages remain stagnant. Now, you may think, oh, but what's the alternative? I mean, sure, these pods are incredibly expensive, but at least it allows people to live in the city. I mean, there can't be any possible alternative to this reality, right? Well, let me show you the alternative from Europe. So they have very popular social housing all over different countries in Europe. Now, the Center for Architecture.org um, discussed a, a version of this, which is high quality social housing in Europe. So let me just read a piece from that. Across Europe, there is no common definition of social housing. The projects presented include public projects led by government or city authorities, philanthropic schemes led by charities, and collective schemes led by residents. Common to them all, however, is the idea that there are alternatives to purely market-oriented housing provision. Our brave new housing future will not be born out of siding with any single ideology or ethos, but rather through a variety of means and a shared determination by those willing and able to innovate, to improve, and to raise standards. So here is one example of this public housing from Europe. So this is uh, from Austria. This is the Juan Project Wien social housing. This is top quality uh, social housing in, in Europe. But let me give you a little more details from HuffPost here, because this is, this is just one example there is a lot of social housing in Europe, especially in, uh, in Austria. So let me uh, read a little bit about that. With its affordable and attractive places to live, the Austrian capital is fast becoming the international gold standard when it comes to public housing, or what Europeans call social housing. In Vienna's case, government subsidized housing rented out by the municipality or non-profit housing associations. Unlike America's public housing projects, which remain unloved and underfunded, the city's schemes are generally held to be at the forefront not only of progressive planning policy, but also sustainable design. Uwe Manch has called Vienna home for more than 30 years. The 52-year-old Austrian journalist and writer lives in a subsidized apartment in the, north in the north of the European city, in one of the many low-cost housing complexes built around leafy courtyards by the municipal government. Manch pays 300 euros or the equivalent of 350 a month in rent for his one bedroom apartment only 10% of his income so i'm going to get to the the other side of this in a second in america but this guy only pays 10% of his income on housing think about how much you pay for housing whether it's rent or how much you bought your house for think of how much you pay in housing compared to what this guy's paying now also just the obvious comparison here to the previous video, $1,200 a month for a bunk bed. This guy pays $350 for a one-bedroom apartment. Now, there's more to this. According to the municipality, 62% of Vienna's citizens currently live in social housing. Here, rents are regulated and tenants' rights are strongly protected. In contrast, less than 1% of America's population lives in public housing, which is limited to low-income families, the elderly, and people with disabilities. In fact, the extent of Vienna's subsidized housing makes it one of the most affordable major cities in the world. According to the GBV, the average monthly rent paid by those living in government-subsidized housing is $470 for city council tenants and $600 for housing association tenants, with monthly assistance payments available to those struggling to meet housing costs. On average, tenants in Vienna spend 27% of their income on rent. In contrast, a Street Easy study found that the median asking rent in New York City was expected to reach $2,700 in 2015, amounting to 58.4% of the median income in the city. So, there's just no comparison. The majority of people in a major city in Europe live in social housing, and on average, they pay 27% of their income on rent, compared to New York City, where people spend 58.4% of their income on rent. I mean, Americans have been sold this, this lie that public housing has to be drab, it has to be underfunded, and it has to be for the poor and the needy. Clearly, if you look abroad, that isn't the case. There are better ways of doing this, and that does not include spending $1,200 for a bunk bed.